I'm Professor Furun Li at the University of Bath. I'm a power engineer by training, but with a strong interest in economics. In the past 20 years, I have been working from power generation, transmission, distribution, and are planning operation pricing and the dynamic interactions. So that's a bit of my uh, bit of background about myself. And what I would like to emphasize is in the past five years, I have been working closely with British Embassy in Beijing, disseminating the UK's 30 years experience in power sector reform to Chinese policymakers, such as um, NEA, and National Energy Administration, uh, NDRC, National Development and Reform Commission, and the key reform stakeholders, for example, the energy company, uh, the grid companies, the two largest grid companies uh, in China. And so today I would like to take this opportunity to share my learning about China's uh, power sector reform their objectives, achievements, ongoing challenges to spot uh, deep decarbonization whilst uh, maintaining energy and supply security and keep price st uh, stability to small and efficient uh, energy customers. Um, what I would like to say is um, China's power, energy, power sector like its economics, the pace of development in the past 40 years is astonishing. 40 years ago, the installed generation capacity is only about 59 gigawatts. Today, as the installed capacity reached 1900 gigawatts, generating annual uh, energy in the order of 7,510 terawatts terawatt hour to power is 1.3 billion population. Uh, this is going to change over the next 40 years. The scale and speed of the change will astonish, uh, will astonish, um, will astonish us again. Um, that's China announced to reach carbon peak in 2030 and carbon neutrality in 2060. So the expectation is that the installed capacity by 2030 would be 4,000 gigawatts and the annual consumption would rise up again from 7,500 terawatts hour to 11,800 terawatts hour. And uh, though the, we can imagine, given the enormity of the China, the decarbonization challenges are also enormous. I would summarize in three key points. First, uh, rising supply and demand imbalance. Uh, it's again that's uh, due to two key factors. Uh, increased um, intermittent renewable generation, which had a, a natural misalignment with the demand. And the second, uh, uh, second is due to lack of interprovincial, interregional uh, transfer capability that is, is able to transfer surplus clean energy from uh, resource rich areas such as north, northwest, southwest. Uh, to transfer this uh, to demand centers or load centers such as uh, southeast uh, by the coast area. And due to lack of this inter uh, provincial, inter regional transfer capability, there are a heavy clean energy curtailment. So, largely uh, solar and wind energy in Xinjiang and Gansu, and the hydro energy in Sichuan and Yunnan. And we can imagine as decarbonization intensifies, clean energy generation would be further pushed towards the west, towards north. So the distance for energy transfer is going to get even greater uh, in addition to capacity. 
So this is the first challenge for decarbonization of the China power industry, rising uh, supply and demand uh, imbalance. Uh, second challenge is increased system operational challenges and the increased cost to maintain system frequency, security, voltage, and stability. And third is a lack of well-functioning power market to provide time of use and locational use energy prices, especially close to real time, not able to signal uh, signaling surplus or shortage of generation at national, regional, and provincial levels. So for today, I would focus on the third point, lack of well-functioning uh, power markets. So Chinese government um, state council recognizes the importance of well-functioning uh, power markets in resource allocation. Therefore, since 2002, China had three rounds of power sector reform. The first round started in 2002 with the release of the State Council's fifth document. This phase had successfully separated generation from the transmission and distribution systems and prepared the necessary ground for introducing competitive markets. The second round kicked start in 2015 with the State Council's ninth document. The key objectives are to introducing key market components, um, focusing on pricing reform mechanism and effective network pricing and regulation and reducing cross subsidies. The third round followed President Xi's announcement on China's carbon target in September 2020. And reform objectives uh, now is focused on promoting clean energy growth, and introducing green energy trading, expanding trading scope to interregional, interprovincial trading, and introducing differential trading to heavy polluting industry versus uh, highly efficient uh, uh, industry, uh, therefore promoting energy efficiency, uh, in addition to uh, establish a carbon market. So the market structure becomes uh, much more comprehensive, transparent, and with the increased uh, market participants. And so here I would like to give a bit of detail of uh, major achievements China made since the second round of power sector reform introduced in 2015. So in terms of uh, trading centers, there are a total of 34 independent trading centers established since 2015 two national and 30 provincial, uh, forming a comprehensive market structure with a increased uh, trading commodities from energy, ancillary, carbon, uh, carbon markets. We also see increased market participants. Um, we see uh, in 2020, the registered uh, market participants were 117,000, which is six times of the 2015 volume. Uh, in addition, we see increased trading volume and the increased interprovincial and interregional transfer capabilities. I would like to finish um, some immediate reform challenges faced in power sector reform for spotting a deep, decarbon deep decarbonization whilst maintain price stability. Um, first question, the first challenge is how to integrate renewables into power markets, i.e. how to introduce renewable energy into energy and ancillary carbon markets and the potentially capacity market. And given the 
diversity and disparity of China's energy supply and demand, to what degree China's power market should be harmonized? And given the increasing renewable generation, uh, interconnection, and potentially uh, energy storage, how system operations should adapt or change fundamentally to support this uh, low carbon transition, whilst they ensure supply security and resilience. Uh, and finally, to what extent the international experience would be relevant for China's power sector reform and be able to support a well-functioning uh, power markets to develop in China. Thank you.